So we've got gurus overcomplexifying things. We're all chasing after a, a, a pile of silver bullets somewhere. We're buying technology before we're thinking about our customers, and we have the wrong people in the wrong roles. That is depressing. That's, not, that's probably not, not a great state, and honestly, that's probably why all of you are here today to, to come to events like this, at least I can hypothesize. But, but as Julie said, I guess before we, before we go into how we're addressing each and every one of those, I think it would be good first to say that the first and most important thing you need to do in, in roles like this or in, in positions like this is you have to set a vision. You have to ask that question about why are we doing it. And at Ludenbeck, we, we always return back to, to our company. Um, sometimes when we're in the pharma world, we tend to think so much about the tactics that we're working on. Well, we need to maximize, as we said earlier, frequency and reach, or we need to get these metrics, or we need to do this and this and that. But for us, it comes back to trying to make a difference in people's lives that are living with brain diseases. And I will tell you, Lundbeck is a very different company. I've worked in lots of pharma companies. I have been in this space for quite a while. Lundbeck is a company that I always say pa patient centricity is not a PowerPoint slide. Well, actually, here is the PowerPoint slide on patient centricity. But we, we really live and breathe patient centricity as, as a company. And so first and foremost, no matter what we're doing, if we're building an app, if we're rolling out a multi-channel campaign, whatever, we have to ask that question. Is this improving the value of, of the life of someone living with a brain disease? And then it progresses out from there. So you can always say, well, yes, because it's providing a better customer experience. Or yes, it's because it actually adds this added value service to, to one of our products. But this is why we're doing what we do at Lundbeck. And then if we talk specifically about our area in global customer interaction management, it's a really long title. It took me quite a while to learn it uh, myself. But we actually look across our communication channels. So similar to what, what Mike was, was saying earlier, we, we have to look at every single touch point that we have with our customers and patients and ensure that that is actually, that we are meeting their expectations that they would have from a leader in this space. Because we don't have to, 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 to reiterate the point too hard, but the expectations that they have for a leading company, if we want to be the leaders in neurology and psychiatry, then it's not just about the products anymore. It's the way we interact with people as well. And I always say it's, it's good to go early in these days because then people don't steal your thunder. So Mike, thank you for stealing uh, my thunder a little bit with this, with this point. But, um, our, our, our benchmark has, has, is, has to also change because, again, as we fully recognize, um, th this is not about, well, you know, we're not trying to benchmark ourselves against the Pfizer's or against the Behringer's or against the Novartis. We're actually trying to benchmark ourselves on what our customers come to expect because if you return to that why, if you return to the why that we're actually in this to make a difference, then it doesn't matter if, you know, uh, they got a better customer experience from Pfizer than Lundbeck. What matters is they got a really solidly good customer experience that was valuable to them. So when I joined Lundbeck, actually, uh, people said, oh, great, this guy from, uh, from Novartis, he's going to come and, you know, he's going to revolutionize our, our, you know, digital and, and multi-channel and customer experience. But actually, w w the first thing I said was, I don't actually want to come in and bring in all the stuff we were doing at Novartis. I actually genuinely want to try and benchmark ourselves against these companies. And so I, I love this uh, slide about expectations. Do you know people pay $2,100 per head to go to Microsoft Developer Conference? They pay. And that's Microsoft. They're inventing boring stuff that the majority of us here don't like and are always complaining about. And yet people are willing to pay money to go to Microsoft. We are developing treatments that are helping people with bipolar and schizophrenia and depression and alcohol and Alzheimer's. Why, why can't our events be at that level? That's what we're trying to achieve. And when Julie is setting out her digital strategy, it's not to say, well, well let's look at, at this one carer website that a pharma company did three years ago and got an agency award for. It's let's look at Amazon. Let's actually see what they're doing because that's what people come to expect. So this is our vision. You see, it's probably not that uncommon to some of your other visions out there. We really want to create great products, but we also want to create great services for our company. We've got those four tough barriers looming, right? We've got those four things that are really making it difficult to cut through and actually make a difference. Now I'm going to turn it back over to Julie and tell you actually how we're resolving them. <laughs>